Oh, Terminus Act. Terminus, is it? Uh, I just wrote down the first part of your name is Terminus Introduction or something. Best Deer Antler. I don't know. I simply go with, um, I right now at this point, I'm taking the stand on Jing Herbs. I've tried three major ones, which is that New Zealand Deer Antler Company. And they sent out a lot of paperwork when I got the, the sort of three pack with that. Looked good, was a different color than most of them. Um, Jing Herbs, I just, I don't know if it's because Truth has said that, I, I don't know. Uh, the one I'm the most suspicious about, I have to say, I love dragon herbs, but it smells like alcohol to me. I can't, and I can't taste that thickness in there, so I don't know. So maybe people who are taking this, and I know it's most of us like that are older, that are actually taking this real, more of a on a daily basis. And I know a lot of some of you younger people are not sort of doing that, and and you really don't need to be, unless you're being like athletic and, um. And even then, I, I'm not sure if I, I'm into all of that, that sort of stuff. And that's another topic. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit more on pain um, and where I've been and stuff like that. And um, just so you all know about me, I'm 6'7". I've always been around 180 to 200, which means I'm pretty lean. And although for some, I have a kind of a big chest, so I don't have that kind of beanpole look like it might suggest. A lot of people are always puzzled by this and... Um, because, uh, I have a bit of a low center of gravity because all my height is in my torso and my neck. Um, I was a skateboarder when I was, and a surfer when I was a, a, a teenager. And I got into, I never liked skiing. As soon as snowboarding came around, I got, uh, big into that because I could relate to that. Skiing I never liked and never really wanted to do it. Now, snowboarding was a different story. And I grew up around heavy equipment and, and running heavy equipment. It's what my family did. I come from a wealthy family. And so all of these factors, these things, um, set me up for a lot of pain. Um, the being around heavy equipment, some of the injuries that I had. I stopped snowboarding altogether in 1993 because I had a very close call. Um, which And lucky for me, I didn't actually go to a regular medical doctor. I went to a very alternative uh, chiropractor out of a desperate need who was right up the street from me and I just it was kind of a desperate moment and it opened a lot of doors for me I could talk about that in depth anyways I've dealt with pain a lot I am somebody that should be like an old athlete kind of in pain all the time and a lot of this stuff with this pain stuff a lot of this getting into the omega-3s uh, amino acid supplementation all this stuff I really feel good every day um, I feel really and and I, I just arrived at this with some of my journey, starting kind of with this blog, um, of getting more into this, and I'm I've got at this plateau where I don't I don't really get that euphoric, you know. I just feel good all the time, and so that feel good has become a normal thing, and so it's not such a euphoric kind of boom. And so um, yeah, you get steady steady with all that stuff. Um, of uh, landmark things, um, one of the ones that happened with me that was a big one was with a calmness coming over me. I had sort of, in 2010, I stopped being, it's almost 25 years that I was a complete vegan, low-fat vegan at that too. Um, did this little meat, some changes in my consciousness, the big change, you know, and I, I was definitely on a high then of, of having this sort of hero, fresh hero thing going on with Truth Calkins, and I was going down to Los Angeles like uh, every other week, if sometimes every week. And a big changer with for me was... Uh, uh, taking uh, B vitamins and specifically the one that I found was most effective for me was uh, Be Right by Jaro. Cheap investment. That's a, about a 14 or $15 bottle. Um, and you could do some like kind of double dosages for maybe a few weeks and then drop back to the normal dosage. Um, and B vitamins um, definitely help with kind of keeping you calm, uh, Shen contributing, working with the dopamine serotonin thing. They work really nice with the probiotics. Um, assist with um, protein absorption and at the same time was when I got into a lot of amino acids which is something I'm still playing with but I'm not of having a realization that some of these isolates are not whole foods and that they could have a medicinal property when you take them too much of them and so I kind of go in and out and uh, this is the gateway to talk about this new one I talk with a lot of people um, on the health thing. One of the people that I talk to a lot 
is a guy um, that's a mixed martial arts fighter. He works in the supplement section at a big health food store I go to, this one right here, Clark's. Um, and they're one of the biggest in the area here and in where I live there is a the, the sort of hub of Seventh-day Adventist universe is Loma Linda across the valley from I'm on one mountain they're kind of on a lower mountain across the valley from me and so where I live is a is a big attraction because the Seventh-day Adventists are really known for their their love of health consciousness so this place thrives very nicely and they kind of have a little different slant than the whole Los Angeles but this one guy I know works a supplement section there. His name is uh, Cameron. For any of you local people who I know, there's a few of you who listen to me. Uh, he's a great source of information that you may not find in the raw food world. He's a mixed martial arts fighter. And so, long story short, and I'm trying to tell you, don't listen to everybody. You know, get stuff that you, information, run it through your heart. Experiment with it. I'm big on experimenting. I'm like, really, fuck those boxes. Just play, 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 play. Take mental notes, write notes, keep see what works. So here's a new one I'm starting for all you older Jing masters like me um, that uh, Cameron told me about over at Clark's. Deaspartic acid, and, and they actually, he said, oh, we don't even carry that. This is a good, some, haven't looked into it a lot. He said it's great for testosterone. So I got this off eye, eye herb. I'm going to try the whole thing of doing a scoop every day. Uh, deaspartic acid, um, and it's kind of from the bodybuilder world. You can tell by this weird, kind of macho looking sort of label, or at least I think that's the way it looks. I do want to talk about is a lot of the sort of debate that went on the video last about. Um, I, I'm not saying I don't believe in the ancestral thing, I'm not saying I don't believe in the evolution. Uh, the, the, uh, I also believe in no evolution. I'm really into this kind of new agey thing that I think there's a lot of, and I'm not, myself, I'm not ready to admit that all of us quote-unquote humanoids are from the same pod. I really see a lot of differences, like, they sort of try to lump everybody, like, some, I don't see it with, with my heart. Um, when I see, like, how I look, Versus like, what's a kind of a race that's really different from, that's opposite from mine is this sort of, um, one is definitely the sort of Pacific Islanders, the sort of heavy ones with the, um, not the sort of more effeminate light features that a lot of Japanese, and I wasn't, that's not gender, I just mean, but there's these sort of rough and tough uh, Pacific Islanders, it's a very different kind of look. Um, and then another one that's really different is this kind of look like uh, Bjork has, a sort of uh, Eskimo kind of and um, please forgive for not that I'm not using these right terms I I'm not sure what's going on here but there's a lot of I'm into the new age shit and I think that maybe evolution didn't exist at all for some of us and that maybe we are exports from other planets that we were created here by godlike aliens um, there's a lot of stuff, and, and again, I keep talking about this book by Drumvalo Melchizedek that really suggests that there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, and there's not a lot of evidence of this stuff other than the pyramids, which is pretty fucking good evidence, if you ask me. Nonetheless, people don't really address this, and they go, oh, well, the science, and the science is kind of a little muffled, because, like, for example, just in Egypt, uh, they won't let, like, open-minded people in there to sort of look at that shit because it sort of conflicts with the historic significance of their belief system, which is Muslim. And if they were to find out that there's some sort of a figure on the planet that's more like 20, 30, 40, 50,000 years, it's going to conflict with what their sort of national belief religion is. And a lot of that's going on with just every religion, and, and it's just a lot of deception. So... I'm not saying I tend to be more with the sort of big one, because um, that's how I am. I'm quiotic. I just believe there's something very grand. So there was this big argument that was going on, and I don't, the evolution thing, I don't discount. I'm, I'm interested in that, but I also think, possibly, I'm not, that's why I'm not really into this whole box thing. So um, uh, some arguments going on there with the vegan person and um, tsunami machine uh, on all of that then. Oh yeah, today is the day to live. It's definitely uh, a, one of these, I, I want to uh, really push up that I'm not saying, 
oh, what I know is the thing. What I'm an advocate for is this sort of exact, in this comment that today is the day to live, that he left about being an experimenter. And I, playing with stuff and going around, and this is where people go, oh, I thought you were, oh, I thought you were, oh, I, I will get very passionate about something. Um, there's kind of two ways of looking at, at this. Some people say never say never. I'm a person who gets very passionate. I can't tell you how many times I've quit smoking pot or quit doing drugs or something like that's where I am now. And um, So people say never say never. I, say, I come at it with a passion of like, I feel so amazing about this. And then I've done it and I don't give a crap what other people think. I go, oh, I'm not doing that now. So I go after something with passion with like, and like one thing I think I'm going to be going back to this spring is a bit of the sort of Sproutarian mentality. I'm going to get into that. Um, and I had, I feel like I had a lot of success with that before I got into the stupid Fruitarian shit in my sort of late twenties and thirties. I was really, really into the Sproutarian world. And I'm going to jump into that a bit, I believe. It's just kind of where I'm feeling what I want to do now and Mixing it with some of my other stuff. Always experimentation. You know, the fact that we can't put any one consistent thing with any of these cultures that are having success with longevity, what does that say to me? What does that say to me as a white boy, Westerner, living in Southern California that has does not know anything about who his indigenous um, European roots are, that's all been kind of blurred with who knows what's going on, that tells me that what I'm supposed to do is hybridize. I've, I felt this as hybridize everything and uh, um, just be a true omni kind of thing because there's like there's kind of a success with almost everything. And maybe a place that kind of has a diet that looks shit, it's like maybe their emotional, mental, and spiritual part of them is way richer and it makes up for that. And so that's why I say that in this world, I, I think that people who can kind of uh, transmute prana and do the heavy meditation can kind of get away with some of these wonk diets that I consider wonky because I'm a little more in this world uh, of being physical. I'm not so invested in some of those other things and it is my mission to get that but um, and I just do have to make that distinction because uh, some of these people like Dan the Man with a lot of this fasting um, not a good thing to be doing and I'm just I'm kind of the pot calling the kettle black and I'm just saying um, as somebody that's not in that cosmic world yet of transmuting prana I don't think you are either Dan I think a lot of that stuff is kind of uh, you still really haven't dealt with a lot of the the ghosts and I'm not trying to make anybody choose sides with me and Dan I'm just I am a protagonist kind of person I've got a lot more experience in this whole thing than all of these guys that want to go Oh, I was doing that for 11 or 12 years or some shit like that. Or, um, you know, and I, I came out of a whole dark world of booze and and this and I went to the raw food diet. I never was like that. I came out of a good family. I was into like health food and stuff at a very young age. Supplements, became vegetarian. I never had something to be born again from. So I am the protagonist for sure. I love I love this stuff. I'm a big supporter of all that basic stuff, but it's all 30 fucking years ago. And some of these people like cool vegetarian and uh, all of them have, you know, sort of pick and choose what they want out of this. And a lot of stuff that they don't address is like making a lot of this stuff at home. Like it seems like the raw food diet is expensive, but sprouting, doing these probiotics at home. A lot of these guys have kind of modified a lot of this to uh, to where it, it is where it is and there is probably a bit of completeness that was going on with the originators of some of this stuff with uh, Sproutarianism and sort of a lot of these micro factors that are into that and as well as these probiotics that they all are dismissing and stuff like that so uh, 